you. Thank you for coming to our Christmas Eve service. A lot's going to be going on. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you're here today. Uh, here's some announcements, so pay attention. Since today is Christmas Eve, all PM activities and services are canceled. So you know what that means. It means you got a lot of extra time to run home and start doing the nice things. Get that lump of coal out of the stocking, put your jammies on, mix up that hot cocoa, sit by the fireplace because it's cold outside. It's almost the end of the year. We've got this Sunday and next Sunday, December 31st, to put $5 or more in the boot for Texas Boys and Girls. $5 gives one child four meals. If you feel like giving, now is the time. It is Christmas after all. I know it's kind of a duh thing, but on Monday, Christmas Day, we're going to be closed here in the office. We're also going to take Tuesday, the next day, off. You know what that means. We'll be back in the office on Wednesday. That's everything for church. And that's going to be the final day we can receive your tithes and offerings for 2017. So if you still have that extra dollar or $5 or whatever you have to be a blessing to the church, we need it by the 27th of December. And of course, the last Sunday of this month is going to be New Year's Eve. That means that everything, believe it or not, is going to be normal in the morning. Early service at 9.15, Sunday school, and then our contemporary service at 11.30. But we're not going to be having PM services again. Oh, you're so right, John. That way you can celebrate the incoming New Year with your family. Or friends. If you have. Or both. Or you just go to bed early. Happy New Year. Pick me. That is all the announcements we have for you this morning. So you know what that means. John and I get to get back to decorating the tree. So you guys have a very Merry Christmas. And ladies, we'll finish the tree for you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to Calvary. I love to see you, everybody. You too, right? So we just stand and welcome each other and say Merry Christmas to each other. What? Two, three, go.
praise the Lord. Yes, yes. He is so our joyful noise. Okay, you may be set. Mm. Mm -mm. Amen. Good morning, church. What a great morning to be here on Christmas Eve. Just real honest, real quick. How many of you still got just one more gift that you need to get? <laughs> Not too bad. I figured more guys' hands went up. But you know what? I've got a reminder what really works good. So just in case, that's nah, not for the children's moment, sorry. <laughs> Good to have you here this morning. If you're visiting, we want to welcome you. Say thanks for visiting with us at Calvary in, a, in your order of services. Welcome guests. You're welcome to fill that out. Take it to our welcome center after our service. We'd love to give you a special Christmas gift for worshiping with us. If you have a prayer request, write that down there as well. Put that in the offering plate. We've got a, a full service today. I hope you came ready to have some joy in your heart, unspeakable joy about what's going to go on tomorrow. And so I, I just want to thank you for being out. You're, I knew you would not let a little breeze stop you from coming to church. I know a little breeze is going to stop you. It's just, shoot, 19 degrees. What kind of Texan would stay home? Come on. So I hope you do. I hope you open your hearts to worship this morning. Uh, one of the ways we do worship here at Calvary, and that's through prayer. Uh, Kim and I and Dr. Che are right down here. You are more than welcome to come down here and pray with us. You're welcome to sit right where you're at. But we proclaim to be the family of God here at Calvary and nobody's alone. So I know it might seem kind of awkward, but reach out to somebody because this is one of those times that there's a little more love, a little more joy, a little more compassion. And grab a hand and, and pray. Pray that God moves in an amazing way this morning. So let's go before him right now in prayer. that you've done for us and thanking you for this time of the year that you sent your son to be born as a human but to die as our savior what what a great gift that is of the greatest gift of all we just pray now as we go into our time of worship that you bless each one that has a part and just may this truly be a time of worship and that all our hearts would be in a worshipful attitude for all that you've done. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Children, it's time to come on down for the children's moment. Here I am, guys, over here in the corner by the forest. Come on down. Come on down. Let's be a little excited. There's still time for a lump of coal, so nobody on the naughty list today. It's all nice. Whoop. Come around. Come on, man. I just got to say all at once, is everybody ready for... Christmas? Yes. Yeah, so that means, you know what, just real quick, has anybody ever had a birthday party? Yes. yes. Have you ever been to a birthday party? Yes. So what are some things that you want at your birthday party? What do you want when you, presents? Oh yeah, yeah. What else? Cake. Mm, does it say your name on the cake? Happy birthday clay. Yeah. So you want a cake. You know what? In the Bible, it tells of a story that there was a party going on and, and people were sent out far and wide to come to this party. But you know what? Not very many showed up. That'd be kind of sad. If you threw a birthday party and you were all excited and you had the door open and nobody showed up. You know, we're celebrating Jesus' birthday today, but it's tomorrow. So we are having a party here today. We're singing. We're worshiping. We're going to experience the Lord's Supper. We're going to have a candlelight service, all kinds of things in celebration of Jesus' birth. And this is what it says in the Bible in Luke, and she'll be in Matthew chapter 1. It says, she will bear a son and she will call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That was the reason that God sent his son. A celebration of sorts that we would be able to make it to heaven because Jesus was going to give us a gift, a birthday gift. But he had to be born first in order to give us a gift. So as much as you want everybody at your birthday, 
cake and presents. It'd be pretty sad tomorrow if you jumped up and opened all your presents and took a nap and went through all the day and you forgot. What's that up there on that marquee? What's it say? And what, what's it say it on? We think, a cake. It'd be really sad tomorrow if you forget that it's Jesus' birthday. So sometime tomorrow, I want you to stop everybody what they're doing. You can even get up on top of the table. It's okay. It'll be alright. Nobody will mind. And at the top of your lungs, when I count to three, we're going to say happy birthday, Jesus. Just to practice, okay? They're not watching. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday, Jesus. Ooh. I think we need one more try, okay? At the top of your lungs. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Jesus. <clears throat> we'll work on that this week. <laughs> okay, so tomorrow you guys got to do that. You need to celebrate Jesus' birthday tomorrow because that's why God sent him to save us, to give us a gift of salvation, okay? Deal? Tomorrow. Happy birthday, Jesus. And then when we're done, you see this? I only got one, but Miss Kim over there has a whole basket full. So if you want one, go see Miss Kim. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today to celebrate the anticipation of the birth of your son is something we, we cannot be quiet about. We have got to rattle the room with our voice saying, Happy birthday, Jesus. You gave us the best gift of all in salvation if we would receive you in our hearts. I pray every boy, every girl here would experience that tomorrow. That sometime during the, during the day they would stop at the top of their lungs rejoice that Jesus Christ is born. And everyone said... Yes. Amen. Get a candy cake. <coughs> Gift is always good, especially sweet thing, right? Awesome. Two thousand, more than two thousand years ago, this song probably proper, but not only that time. Right now, we just stand, we sing together. Come, let us all join.
this uh, uh, scripture reading, Psalm 145, a Psalm of David. I will exalt you, my God and King, and I bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Together. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And His greatness is unsearchable. No. 
I'm so thankful for this morning, for the opportunity that we get to come and worship you as a, as a body. And God, I pray that we don't forget what you did for us, that we don't forget what this season means, God. God, you came down, you sent your son down for us to live on this earth as a baby. And we are grateful for that. And that's why we praise and worship you this morning. I pray that you continue to get the praise, you continue to get the glory throughout this season and into the new year. In your name I pray, amen.
Amen to that. I'm, I'm tempted to take an offering and call it quits, but <laughs> ain't gonna. Wow, Sunyan, thank you. What a blessing that was. It is good to have you here on Christmas Eve. And we think about Christmas Eve a lot. The Eve, the anticipation, the building up of. You've all been there when, when something's coming up like maybe the new Star Wars movie coming out and you just couldn't wait to go see it. Or maybe it's actually that birth of that child and you were told about and, and told about and, and waiting and waiting. Anticipation is one of those words that a lot of us don't like. Those who are impatient. We don't like to anticipate. We just like to get it done. Get it over with. Move on. So this morning, as you got out this morning, and, and even right now as our live stream family is even part of us as well, you might have anticipated something this morning. You, you could have stayed home because surely you heard that little breeze blowing. Saw a couple of leaves rustling around like, ah, that's my loop, that's my out. It's too windy. Well, if you'd be more like me, remove the obstacle. <laughs> so you got here no matter what. And now you're anticipating what's coming next, what's coming after Steve speaks. We've got the Lord's Supper here. Candlelights are going to be, candles will be coming out. We're going to finish off in a, in a big way that way. And then you're off to, to celebrate. And the anticipation of tomorrow. The getting ready to say, hey God, thank you. Thank you for sending that one and only son. Because without him, it's, it's for nothing. This whole event is nothing. Without God saying, Jesus, they need you. You're going to be my intercessor. You're going to be the one who's going to come and, and take the sins of the world so they can be with me. I'm thankful for that. Because as I anticipated this event today, I kind of started anticipating about two this morning. I got a little antsy. I got a little churny and a little bubbly and was walking around and like, oh, I wonder if, if I say this, is this going to go out? If I, if I tell them that, will they, will they understand what I'm saying? If, will they get it? I hope you came this morning to get it. You know, Noel, think about that. You know, birth. And you think about the journey. I'm in Matthew chapter 1. Many of you have read the story. But when you read it in a fresh new way about, have, have you ever been told by somebody to do something? And you're like, really? I kind of like created that. What, what, are you, what are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to school me? Anybody ever been told something like, I already got that. Think about that as we read. Think about Joseph. What's going on? He said, I got it taken care of. She's pregnant when, and I'm going to quietly, you know, and move on. Then he got told something. He got told something. And he's like, what? Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Here we go. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, you understand, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to the public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her. Shh. Didn't have Jerry Springer back then. No scandal going on. He was going to do real quiet like. But after he had concluded this, an angel of the Lord. I just said, you ever have somebody tell you something and you already had it figured out? Joseph had already figured it out. I'm, I'm going to quietly get rid of her. And then an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. Think about that. From their sins. This all took place to fulfill the, what the Lord has said through the prophet. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel or God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. He, he did 
what he was told after he'd already put in place his plan. And many of you got plans today. Many of you got plans tonight, plans tomorrow, plans tomorrow night, and you've got it all planned. How many people have just got it planned? I got the plan. It's, it's planned out. Well, Megan, Shelley, what if he said, well, you're not going to do that today? What? See, I had this plan. I was working on my sermon last week, and, and I'd finished it. It was kind of a crazy Thursday, and I'd finished it. A couple of T's left to be crossed, a couple of I's dotted, and I saved it. Friday morning, I come strolling here, bada boo, bada bing, open up my little chicken wing. There ain't no sermon there. I mean, it's like, poof. And that's when you have one of those intimate conversations with God. It starts out kind of like, Oh, God, no. Where is it, God? God, I had it right here. God, don't, I'm doing this for you. Hello? Where is it? I'm searching. And I'm like, hey, it's auto backup. It's got to be somewhere. It was nowhere. So I thought, okay, I'll, be, I'll put my computer tech hat on. I'll go back to factory, restore, and restore back to yesterday. I've never tried to go back in time. Needless to say, after 45 minutes, Computer failed to restore back to yesterday. I'm like, no, my dear wife. And I'm telling her, I'm freaking out to her. And she comes back with the spiritual, well, maybe God doesn't want you to talk about that. <laughs> to which I answered, oh, yes, he does. <laughs> That's all he wants me to talk about is Noel. I told him. Cal calm down. It's, it's in there somewhere. Hallelujah. He got tired of hearing the baby cry. Amen. And it struck me as I was surfing. I thought I saved it under Noel, which would have been smart, but I saved it under the first, of which I didn't look for the first. I was just looking under Noel. And I found it. Because I wasn't about to listen to, to God say, Steve... I don't want you to talk about that. I've taken it out of your computer. It's, it's gone. It's not the plan, God. I'm trying to get you to understand what Joseph was saying. I've got a plan, God. You, you hear? She's pregnant. We, we haven't, so it's not my, and I don't know who, so I'll just quietly, that's not my plan, Joseph. I'm going to send my speaker, my angel, and listen to him. And then angel, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Joseph, to take her as your wife. There's a lot of times, folks, let me just tell you this morning, that we're scared that we're going to do something wrong for our Savior. That God's going to put something so big on us that we're going to blow it so bad that He's just going to say, oh, I'm never going to ask you again. You're off the team. It's not going to work that way. If we pay attention and we do what He says. That's the harbor. A lot of us say, well, I heard Him, but just didn't do it. I, I just knew it was going to work better my way. How many my way people do we got this morning? Oh, it's my way. I, I've got this smoothed out my way. I mean, think about this journey that we're on. The my way journey. And that's where a lot of us are. That my way journey that, hey, you know, I, I'll start, come and see what God has done. I kind of snuck that in there. And I'll tell you why. We're pretty good... When we've done something, kind of like, anybody like puzzles? I bring that up for a reason. We're, we do puzzles at Christmas. Well, I say we. I'll do one piece and they will do 900, 999.9. I, I get to put one in there because it literally takes me all day to find that place. I, I just don't have that mindset of turning it and fitting it. John will walk by and go, oh, there it goes. I just can't do it. And so we get that, you, you got that last piece of that thousand piece puzzle and you put it in there and you're like, come, come check what I did. <laughs> Look what I did. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe you built a car or a pickup from rust up. And it's all done and polished and pristine. You're like, hey folks, take a look. <laughs> Look what I did. Maybe you have a child. Maybe there's that perfect little bundle of joy and you step back and go, yep, that's all me. 
I did that. Got every good gene out of me in that one and every bad gene out Well, we won't talk about that. But, <laughs> but look what I did. That pride gene just seems to kind of sneak up and c come and see what I did. Folks, can I be honest with you this morning? You didn't do it. God, through you, has got you here, has got you to where you're at. God has resolved your sin issues through the blood of his son. If you'll just allow him to resolve them. God's got a better life for you if you'll give him this mixed up, messed up life that you're in right now. He's got a better path for you to walk on if you go, you know what, I'm lost. I'm sick and tired of going over the bumps and the potholes and falling down and scraping and banging. And God said, come and, come and see what I got for you. Come and see what I'm going to do through you. I don't know if you've taken that journey back to where you were right before you went over the edge. You were about ready to go, I'm, I'm done. I'm fed up. I'm sick and tired of fighting, biting, barking, begging. Banging my head, so I'm just going to, whoa, I'm done. And you heard that whisper. Come, come here. I've got something better for you. Why don't you just come and see what I got for you. Come walk with me. Come, come take a step. I've got blessings where you've got burdens. Come and, come and see what I got. Come and see what I've done for you. In anticipation of tomorrow, I don't know, how many of y'all right now, just think, yeah, I don't care if you're 10 or 100 years old, how many of y'all, I hope I get something. Come on, I hope, I hope I get something. I was a pretty good, I hope I get something. Or you who are sitting there like this, I want to be your friend because I ain't got to worry about you. <laughs> so, you're on my list now. Oh, they don't like presents. All of us want something, don't we? Joseph wanted to be the husband to Mary. To consummate the marriage, to have a family, and all of a sudden, what? Oh, how'd that happen? Oh, there's an angel of the Lord kind of, Don't worry, Joseph. It's a, what? Could you, could you imagine how that just rocked his world, ruined his plans? But he had that visit. I don't know what it's going to take for you to have that visit. Or are you just prideful about, well, I didn't do that. I want nothing of that. I want to be no part of that. Nope. Don't want to be anywhere near that. But the voice of the Lord said, come on over. Come, it's okay. Stand by her. It's going to be okay. I, I got to show you something. But if you, you won't see it unless you stand by her. You won't experience it unless you're there. Look at that picture. That man standing above his wife and looking at that baby. If you still got your Bible with you, we're going to take a little jump over to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, watching over their flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord, busy angel, appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. Angel said to Joseph, don't be scared. Don't be afraid. I'm bringing you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Think about that. The angel of the Lord came to these shepherds, watching over their flocks by night. He said, hey guys, something big's happened. Basically, come and see. Come and see what God's done. Any Christmas light uh, cruisers out there? Have you been cruising any Christmas light places? I know in our neighborhood it's like, golly gee. Man, it's just a bulb with light coming out of it. But shh, we did the same thing. We went to Lubbock. And it was amazing. They've got a, what's it, a scavenger hunt. You had to find a penguin which was hard. You had to find a polar bear that was hard. And all these other things in people's yards and you finally found them. It's like, yeah, let's go get cocoa. And so it was, it was just fun. But we wanted to see life. We wanted to go and see. Folks, I don't know where you're at in your life this morning. 
I don't know where you're, if this is just a holiday you're glad to see because you get an extended weekend, or I just pray that you're wanting to come and see what God has done. That tonight, as you anticipate the birth tomorrow and celebrate that, you're sitting in your chair, you're on the couch, you're, you're maybe by the fireplace, or you got one on your TV that's crackling, and that mood just kind of sinks over, and you sit there for a moment and ponder these things. The angel went to these shepherds, lowly people, and said, why don't you go over there, why don't you go see what, what God's done? Why don't you go see what God has done? Noel. I did a little research on Noel. Think about that. Noel, although no Christmas season would be complete without that Noel song and the, the caroling, not much is known about it, but it comes from the origin of France in the 15th century. Noel. And the song that you think about you, that you really know is really Latin for the meaning of birthday. From France to Latin to birthday. Way, way, way. But 1832 it went over to England. Then came to America. And think about that. The Americans went and Americanized it. That at the same time the carols were being sung, this song was being embedded in our hearts. Do you understand what Noel means? And I, I hope you'll get a better meaning with this definition of Noel. gave the sign bow to babe on bended knee the savior of humanity unto us a child is born he shall reign forevermore from the grave Christ the everlasting Lord He shall reign forevermore
take a look. And we know what a baby is. Thank you guys for coming down. Yes. And we think about that. We think about life like it happens in the snap of a finger and we've got it made. We've got our life laid out, planned out, plotted out. I hope you maybe got a a glimpse this morning. Noel. Birth. Celebration. But what God did. Let's try to take our hands out of our pockets and from across our chest. And let's try to open our hearts for the first time maybe this morning and say, you know what? I heard something for the first time. I've been kind of taking credit for what I've done. That's really what God's done. What God's done. He's, he's given you that family. He's given you that direction. He's holding you up today from that temptation. He's crashing those chains from around your neck. He's allowing Satan to be under your foot to crush him over the temptations and the destructions he wants your life to be. He's the one who gets all the credit for what we're going to celebrate. He's the one who sent his one and only son that we might accept him as our savior. So this morning is that opportunity to you. Maybe, maybe you need to lay something down that you think you have to carry because of what you've done. Maybe you're in a mess. Maybe there's a mess around you. And you just don't see how you're going to get out of this mess. Noel. Birth. Celebration. That's what we're supposed to be doing. There shouldn't be any stress. But there is stress. There shouldn't be no depression. But there's depression. Because there's an enemy out there that even hates this moment, what you're hearing. Noel, I pray you would come and see what God has for you. Come take a walk with him and see where he wants to take you. Walk in his steps for just a day and see if your day isn't better and brighter and even bigger than what you anticipated it to be. Would you stand with me please? Well, Father, there's no doubt we, we've heard the Christmas story. We've watched the shows about it. The journey, the tough times, baby in a manger, perfect and pristine. But may we just never forget, it's not what I did. It's what you did, God. It's what you did over 2,000 years ago. You did it that we might receive salvation. We don't have to walk out these doors today, Father, bent over, broken. We can walk out with our head held just a little bit higher, our step a little bit sharper, our heart pounding a little more passionately because of what you've done. You sent the Savior of the world to redeem the lost of the world. And we might spend eternity with you. Father, as as we sing an invitation, God, may, may they hear my voice. I'm not inviting them to me. I didn't do it. I'm inviting them to you so they can see what you can do. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, lift it up. I love
Father, again, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for each and every individual that's represented here today, Lord. And Father, we just lift this day to you, Father. We we thank you for your son, Father, bringing him so that we might have salvation, Lord. Father, we just uh, pray, Lord, as we move through these next few days, Lord, that we could just uh, share in your love, Lord, and that we could glorify you in all that we do, Lord. I ask now that you would go with us through the remainder of this day, Lord. I ask now that you would bless this offering. You bless, bless the gift and the giver, Lord. And continue to shower your love upon us that we might give it to others as we move through this community and this uh, country. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen. Amen. As the deacons are coming to prepare the Lord's Supper, we're going to do it a couple of different ways here. If you would like to receive the, the cracker and the cup of juice, you're going to remain seated right where you're at. If you'd like to receive the bread and dipping it in the chalice, I'm going to ask you to step around the perimeter of the worship center, and that way we'll know who needs to do what. So if you'd like to receive the, come down the center aisle and receive the bread in the juice, would you just kind of quietly and quickly move to the perimeter of the worship center? If you'd like to receive the cracker and the cup, please remain seated right where you're at. And that's why our deacons are up here. Afterwards, we're going to pass out some candles. And I need you to, to understand candles and flames and wax and all that stuff. Uh, if you have a small child, I'd love for you to hold that candle with them. And uh, that way they can be part of that as well. So we'll have candles hopefully for everybody. We'll pass those out. And then uh, we'll have three people going down the aisles. If your candle is unlit, please point your unlit candle to the lit candle and remain, have your lit candle remaining up because we're trying to keep the wax off the pews and the carpet and all that stuff. But uh, you who remain seated, I'll have our deacon body. We'll serve you the bread. We'll eat the bread as family first. And then we'll come back. We'll pass out the juice. We'll say the blessing of the juice. Then we'll drink that as well.
Steve Osborne to bless our bread. I would say the scripture over it, and then we would eat. Steve? Lord, we just come to you right now remembering that your body was torn apart and it was broken for the Savior of the world. We just thank you for that, and we pray that at this time we especially remember that. These things I ask in your name. Amen. And Jesus did take the bread and lift it up and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Take and eat. And just say, if you have a small child that would like to partake, please hold that cup for them as well. And we'll pass out the drink. our deacon Terry Burris to say the blessing over the drink I would say the scripture and then we would drink Terry our gracious heaven father lord we just thank you for this day and lord we thank you for all the blessings you give us lord lord I thank you for this time the season I thank you for your birth lord and lord I thank you for dying on the cross for our sins lord I just thank you for the blood that was shed for our sins lord and just let this 
part of our service be a remembrance in everything that you have done for us. We ask these things in Jesus' name pray. Amen. And Jesus did take the chalice and he lifted up and said, This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, the blood that is shed for all of sin, for the multitude of sin, for the many sins, for all. Take and drink. If you'd pass your cups down to the end, we'll have our deacons come by there, pick them up. For those who have chosen to stand up and go to the back, Jesus did. Now let me just say, there's no right or wrong way or cracker, bread, tortilla, whatever it is. It's all symbolism. I hope you understand that. It's all symbolism. And so Jesus did take that bread and he did break it. So this is my body. It's been broken for you. And as you come down this center aisle, I hope you'll understand that, that as you take that cracker, as you eat that bread, it's his body broken for you. And he, and he picked up that, that cup, that chalice. And it seems kind of funny. We'll make a fit about the bread, but we won't say nothing about wine. But this isn't wine. It's just juice. But the symbolism of it's his blood, blood that was shed on that cross for all of your sins, so as you take that into your body, understand he did it just for you. Come and see what God has done through the life and death of his son. If you've chosen to come down the center aisle, would you come at this time? And as they're coming, if I could have a couple of deacons kind of get the candle boxes and pass those out to the ones sitting. <coughs>
Hope you understand that was a personal, intimate time for you to experience. And now, if I can get Chuck to turn down all the lights in the worship center and the stained glass, please. As that night must have been, not illuminated by LED lighting, but rather just by starlights. Just by the stars out there. And, and we want to try to symbolize how important a light is. I don't know if you've been in darkness. I don't know if you're in darkness right now. You might be going through a dark time. You might be experiencing Christmas for the first time in a difficult place. Let me tell you, there's a light of the world that wants to illuminate your life for the rest of its life on this planet. But in order to do that, you've got to receive Him. You've got to receive that light into you. You can't walk in the darkness if you've got the light inside of you. The light of the world. And, and as we are seated here with a dark candle, how important is one light? How important is one light? It might just be a neighbor who's in the darkness. It might be tonight inviting somebody over to break bread with you and to experience. They might be without a family. And to invite them over into your house to sit, to fellowship. Or tomorrow, the celebration. How important is one light in your life? Because we're about to see how important one light is. For as I lit the first light and, and now it's starting to spread. Think about that. The light of the world, just as simple as it is spreading in here, spreading outside these doors. But it takes you doing something. <clears throat> it takes you reaching out. Out of your comfortable little box. Maybe to a stranger. Just like you're doing now, you're, you're passing your light to someone. You're sharing the brightness and even the warmth of a light to somebody who's cold and in the dark. That's what we're called to do, church. We are called to share the light. As much as God said, why don't you go to Bethlehem and see what I've done, they followed a light, a star. <coughs> There's somebody out there who needs your light. It's going to take you reaching that light out to someone. Engaging in their life. Take a look what's happened to this dark room now. It's almost fully illuminated because of one light. Maybe tonight, as you sit wherever you're going to sit, as you fellowship with whoever... You will seek to be a light to someone. It might be a small child that you're going to train up that child in the way they should go. It might be a difficult relationship that you're in. Knowing that that person has chosen to put their light out and wants to put yours out as well. He is the light to the world. And He is asking you to share that light with others. Would you stand with me as we sing our closing song today? Joy to the Lord. One, two, three.
Christmas. Uh, can you love my brother? Last Christmas, Travis 18. Yes, yeah, sir, Ryan. Ryan. Just happy. Merry Christmas. Look away for one second. You can't do that.